Hey, what's good, you guys? I've always promised you intelligent conversations only. Renel Abraham is a Bollywood insider. He hosts his own chat show. He's also one of the most highly networked people I've met in the media industry in general. So the dope that he's gonna dish on this podcast is gonna be super spicy, super real, and super deep. It's gonna be a deep, intelligent conversation about the dark side of Bollywood, but also about the bright side of Bollywood. What it takes to become big in the Bollywood industry. So if you're even remotely interested in the Bollywood industry, Trust me, you're gonna enjoy every bit of this podcast. I know it's one hour long, but podcasts are one of those things where you're not really supposed to watch the podcast. You're supposed to listen to it. So just before sleeping, I don't know, keep your phone on the side of the bed. Listen to it deeply. You're gonna have fun throughout this conversation. You're gonna learn a lot. And if you're even remotely connected to the media industry or interested in the media industry, this one's gonna add a lot of value to your life. And even if it doesn't add value, it's just gonna entertain you a lot. Fun, gossipy session with Renal Abraham. Theme of this podcast is intelligent conversations only, and the theme of this episode is Bollywood gossip with my man. I love how you've put intelligent conversations and Bollywood together. <laughs> you are a visionary. Yes. Yeah. This don't people don't put these two and two together. I'll, I'll tell you why, Renal Abraham. Yeah. One, uh, you're actually younger than me. You're like 25. You've yeah. been in Bombay for like two, three years. It'll be four years. Okay, four, four years. years in September. And you've risen to a place in your career where people like dream of being okay and you've done that in 4 years i feel that that is because of the big brain that you hide from the world yeah <laughs> with you i've i've told you this before huh. i feel like you're the kind of person who shows one version of themselves to bollywood and the world yeah you are a little crazy i have to tell you you like you are creepy <laughs> that's accurate right yeah okay so and then there's one your yoga yeah that's my yoga that's my yoga yeah. talking i can see through people hmm. and there's one version of you that you keep to yourself where you're calculating where you're understanding how to get forward in your career yeah but you're not a bad person you're not using that to like you know you're not using it to hurt someone you're just yeah. using it to progress your own career which is fine yeah uh in this process of progressing talking to people heavy networking you're like one of the most crazily networked people that i know in my life huh. uh you built like a massive bollywood network you have a lot of gup as you call it on bollywood a lot of gossip i do <laughs> without names there is a lot of gup yeah uh in saying that with the gossip you've also got a lot of learnings which yeah. you always share with me you yeah. give me a lot of insights on how the bollywood business works how the bollywood industry works how the vibes are the drug culture the party and the sleeping around So oh my god what is this about <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have like no chill <laughs> yeah, straight yeah. into the drug culture the partying and the sleeping around yes. well done yes and <laughs> i think that's what the viewers are here for as well hmm. so renel my first question to you is that is this drug culture partying and sleeping around a real thing in bollywood does it happen see i mean you know how um see when i came into the industry right obviously like i didn't come into i think i'm a part of the industry now because of like the people that i'm associated with otherwise for the job that i do i should ideally no, not be a part of bollywood as much and mm. i should be a part of the media fraternity mm-hmm. or whatever but i think when i came to bombay there are always these notions of like like how you saying like there's drugs everywhere and there's <laughs> everyone it's, it's like it sounds like a massive orgy that's happening it's it's not that but it's cool though i mean it's it's not just because it's bollywood i think it happens everywhere right i feel like in bollywood see i've said this to a lot of people i feel like you will understand i'm sure because i think it's entertainment and it's creative i think people are a lot more liberal hmm. and a lot more chill when it comes to trying out things accepting yeah now when it comes to trying out things it could mean like it could be alcohol or drugs or like even sleeping around when you i mean you could say this in a very derogatory way but then you could also mean that you're just like just having sex chill. with someone whatever okay. right which is yeah. chill like yeah, yeah. like and people are very chill with like everything and i think that comes with the space of being creative and meddling with art and all of that stuff got it got so it so i think it's a very chill space got it everyone's got it. very like accepting is a good word got it got yeah. it but is there also cheating on spouses and all that yeah okay that's not chill <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gotcha th- <laughs> see i'll tell you now i really feel like i mean there's a lot of it and um, i mean i know people like neighbors who have done this from the industry and i have uh, i might be even guilty of like encouraging it or like making a few happen <laughs> but like i'm very chill though like see this again no judgments yeah like i feel like so there are people who are married and yet have open relationships in the industry there are people who are cheating on uh, their spouses with another person 
but like i remember having a conversation with this woman uh, who's an actor and also like a uh, supermodel she's she's won a lot of pageants and stuff like that she told me she's married to this guy who doesn't live in uh, live in bombay and he lives in delhi as a businessman or whatever i'm giving away too much but uh, she told me that like emotional infidelity is the problem like physically if you are like because because if you know in biology we learned food sex and uh, water are the three basic needs and now if i'm telling you that you can only drink from one bot- water bottle but when you're thirsty you have to go back all the way home and then drink it mm. it's your basic need no mm-hmm. so if it's just about can i swear yeah yeah go for yeah, it yeah if it's just about f-ing it out then yeah. might as well okay. but if you're going back to the same person for your emotional needs yeah then because i feel like a lot of people a lot of couples in the industry have that so they very in, proper distinction so they're sleeping around but emotionally they're coming back yeah, home yeah okay yeah even like the top actors in the industry yeah okay that's happening yeah damn yeah wow and i think it's very progressive though okay like I people cool it's accepted in yeah, the industry yeah damn i mean otherwise that marriage wouldn't i mean see the thing is it's not like it's a marriage on compromise like we would like to imagine that oh my god like they might be having big problems and like you know they're just together for the sake of it there are people like that also mm-hmm. some of the biggest mm-hmm. but like uh, but there are also people who are very chill some mm-hmm. from the young generation who've mm-hmm. gotten married and uh, mm-hmm. they're very chill about it do you know any of these people personally yeah are they emotionally in a good place yeah okay yeah they actually in a great place they're at peace with yeah themselves. yeah wow. and i think that comes from a very good s- space of mind and like yoga and meditation <laughs> <laughs> well mm. Mm. let's let's get to the next topic yeah. but what are your thoughts on this no what are, are my you, thoughts are on you this? okay with like uh, in a relationship would you be okay with uh, physical uh, physical cheating infidelity yeah no because like that's mm. that's how i've been brought up those are my ethics but th- i don't judge anyone because that's yeah, also see, my ethics i'll tell you i'll tell you even with me like yeah. personally in a relationship i'm very loyal yeah but if i ever date somebody who is okay with being open i'd probably be not so okay with it in the beginning but maybe i'd come around you know yeah, because yeah. i i feel like as human beings we're always learning and evolving yeah we might get there one day or yeah, not yeah. no no i i why i get bombay i've grown yeah. up in this city so i understand the mentalities that go on in the city and each to his own yeah. for me at the end of the day i feel like if you have a strong set of ethics that you've been brought up with that you believe in and you're following that and you're happy following that if you yourself are at peace then that's what matters yeah. just for me it's like i've been brought up in a very old school way like an old school guy i love in an old school way if i love someone i love them with like everything i have everything i do is for that person yeah you so, are telling me i've been brought up for 17 years of my life in kerala yeah we're going to get to yeah, that oh, okay uh, but can i tell you something yeah. about this drug culture because something abhi just happened yeah. na, with the whole karan post the video yeah. and i felt really bad what, what video dude. are you talking about karan post karan had a party at his house and there was vicky and shahid and varun and uh, like a lot of uh, big Top. people in yeah. the industry there was dipika and shakun batra and ranbir and I think Nambir was there I think mm. I don't know. I Ayan was there, Zoya was there all these people and there were these common it was a video and they were probably drinking or like I don't know what they were doing what the they wanted to. Mm. They are adults and they I mean I mean I understand the loss of the country but it's a chill video of like people having fun and they were like slammed for like their eyes looking red and like they were like yeah to no drugs kar raha hai and all of that stuff <laughs> and some MLA slammed them on Twitter saying uh like the these are drug related bollywood and all of that stuff i get very concerned when like uh when you just slam an industry but because this is the perception right it, it's just like a massive orgy on mdma or something <laughs> like that but it's not mm. and like i'm okay with like if people are doing a couple of uh, things to relax because they have like 20 hour shifts sometimes yeah. and it's like the accomplished yeah. uh, people who have like worked their ass off to where they are today Yeah I so, also I want to add one more thing to what you're saying uh definitely people have this negative so called yeah, image of bollywood yeah. uh from the perspective of someone in the media industry do to reach the top of bollywood forget the top even to reach the top 30 people in bollywood mm. you need to be a hustler in life you need to be in a positive way an opportunist yeah. you need to be a great networker great communication skills uh you can't settle at just one hit movie yeah so you're perpetually a workaholic you know yeah. for life yeah. all these guys are incredibly hard working and it's not just the actors the, the top directors the yeah. top producers yeah. they're very fast thinkers okay yeah. and that's why not everyone makes it in bollywood yeah. you can be good looking you can be a great dancer you can have a sexy body yeah. but then you need that x factor which some people consider a dark x factor but that these days everybody has what a you, good body and good yeah. looks but that x factors what sets you apart yeah that bollywood. though yeah obviously I mean that that X factor is just like a mix of a lot of things I mm-hmm. feel and like these days I mean a lot of things are coming to place yeah. I mean casting as a big thing has become like 
a lot more channeled and systematic and all of that but then even if you do that one movie where you've been casted it's not like uh, people are sitting there wanting to cast you again and again unless you're so good and that's been such a big launch and even for like so you have to know that a launch happens as a launch when a launch is happening they have like three movies planned it's not like one movie because it's very important that you have this one movie and in the next year in like 6 7 months you should have your next movie mm-hmm. or at least announce it because otherwise people forget you mm-hmm. so it's very important to be like out there and yeah. be and continuously working yeah yeah does parting help you get cast does parting help you grow your network in bollywood you are i mean it's it helps you be seen right okay Got because it. you are j- see it's it's all about as much as i really want to believe that this is an industry based on merits and all of that it's not okay it's an industry that that likes working with people they know they like and they like yeah got it so party is a sp- see i'm not saying that you go party or whatever i'm mm. just saying chill also mm-hmm. it could be a chill situation i'm not saying go get drunk and sleep with someone mm-hmm. it it's just about being visible mm. and you feel like you've made struck up a conversation with yeah. them like i imagine you are an actor and i'm a yeah. casting director yeah. we meet at a party we had a conversation we we hit it off and i i feel like i like your vibe mm-hmm. and tomorrow i'm casting for something i'll be like i like his vibe i want to work with yeah. him because i i might have to work with him for a month might yeah. as well like the guy yeah okay nice so that's the whole thing it's not i mean again like people are saying oh party mein jaake you know baat karo mm-hmm. uske baad go home with it's not that mm-hmm. i mean there are people who does that also i have no problem yeah. whatever party you want to take please take but uh, it's about i mean it's good to be seen na yeah, yeah yeah um my next question to you renal is just give me three really controversial spicy stories <laughs> from the world of bollywood <laughs> you are like one janani <laughs> you're like give me three stories <laughs> with huh. uh with or without taking names that's up to you okay can you na- okay narrow it down for me no like give me like a context to this give me like okay let's let's go like by- do do one 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 and then give me like context for something like okay you give me something on the show something at a party something like that uh yeah could you give me like one okay give me like the wildest story you can recall like if i say the wildest story what's the story that pops up in your head that's the first one Oh. Wild is see I can't see again like it's not a see now I, this is not very wild for me because see I'm very chill with casual sex right mm-hmm. I mean so obviously like private parties are a scene and like house parties yeah there can be house parties or even a club for that matter which could be just taken for that party for that night so people there are people like very close friends of mine who would like move from one person to the other in the same night <laughs> and which is very chill well, and like ve- sex with one person to the other yeah i mean you can't have sex in the club <laughs> but like you could like make out and move to the other okay. person which is chill hmm. and i know about of people who are like married and in like strong like five year six year relationships who like comes to parties and like are very chill mm-hmm. and like i don't know see each to its own right i mean maybe like they're okay with that or like they are not but they still yeah. want to do it is there a lot of coke generally in bollywood cocaine uh yeah okay yeah but like again see it's not like everyone's doing it mm-hmm. there are people who do it there are people who don't mm-hmm. but like i mean of course no one's like randomly throwing it on the see this is the idea right like we enter someone's house and there's one on the uh <laughs> like the the living room seat and then one in the dining room one in the bedroom that's on the scene i've seen that also <laughs> i've seen i've seen parties where i like where like every room someone's snorting mm-hmm. that has happened yeah. but like more like that was more like bollywood politics like oh <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah something like that oh like But, like the politicians and bollywood people as well yeah something like oh, that damn. oh so the mla who you tweeted about current <laughs> party wow <laughs> yeah crazy okay yeah. so that's one story that uh, there's like what oh shit actually at this party this the the one where uh, there was a lot of coke involved hmm. there was this one woman now it's this is actually ridiculous for her to say this she is she lives in the us she has come down for this party and she has met a friend of mine amaira dastoor who is an actor who is my met... junior from school by the way oh god really yeah, yeah. but go on shout out to amy <laughs> yeah what's up amy <laughs> <laughs> so amy was there and we were at, both at this room and this woman is snorting this uh, woman who lives in the us yeah and we were like okay whatever uh, then like so we don't do it so i was like we were just in the room so chilling whatever uh so now she uh, she didn't know who amy was so she was like uh, what do you do and there was another male actor in the same room okay so there's me amaira and this other male actor who's doing really well right now on the web and all of that stuff and uh, she goes to amy she's like what do you do you look so pretty you're lovely looking what do you do and she's like uh, i'm an actor she was like oh don't tell me and i was like uh, so she was like but why so so is he he's also an actor and this this woman is like but that's different for him 
Mm. And and she was like, you could do so much better. Why would you? Why would you be an actor? Mm-hmm. And I'm like. You are an educated woman mm. who lives in the US. Mm. You can't. I mean, illiteracy is not a complaint here. Yeah, yeah. It blew my mind. Wow. You know, yeah. I'm like, this is a modern setup, <laughs> contemporary, like yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you're just like, and being a woman, you're like, yeah. yeah. How yeah. can you be an actor? Yeah. I'm guessing Crazy. this person's like a super old school actor. No, she's not a, not an actor. Oh, okay, okay. Like a like a business woman. Oh, wow. Probably like independent and oh, self made. You know. <laughs> wow. Crazy. Crazy. Um, Are there like physical fights in Bollywood? Fist fights between guys, or at least almost at the brink of becoming physical? Give a shit, you know? What can I tell you? See, I'll tell you something. The there's none in the young generation because everyone's very safe. What do you mean? Safe in the sense, see, obviously, like with social media and phones and cameras and stuff like that, no one's doing anything in public. no one's fighting yeah no one's fighting no one's having a problem because you never know what will go out hmm. but i'll tell you like see a lot of my friends are people who are becoming actors are people who are part of uh, very uh, what do you call it renowned households in the industry there are fights there mm-hmm. that i mean because they're also kids mm-hmm. i mean what can you imagine they're like mm-hmm. 18 to 22 year old kids mm-hmm. i mean there there's one who's like who's a very big actor son and there so there is this club called trist that we go to very often yeah and he got into a fist fight with someone on the center table which is on top you know mm-hmm. that that yeah, one yeah. table which yeah, is like yeah, yeah. in the middle yes and i was like what the hell are you doing mm. like one person takes out a phone this is like yeah 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 so obviously a lot of these fights don't happen because the older ones slightly older ones still in the younger group they're very aware of like what they're doing mm-hmm. they would never even like drink too much in mm-hmm. a place like this you mm-hmm. know unless it's a house party or whatever mm-hmm. then to but like it's very like it's very muted it's there, there aren't many fights and stuff oh, like that God. people but, aren't very but, yeah but you said the older actors generation has actual fights that to we've all heard na okay. what was that some uh, sanjay that fight and all we have heard i have no idea i forgot who he somebody he slapped okay. in his house party like some other actor yeah oh damn there was a big like proper Okay. Yeah, but okay. this I think is a little famous though. Like I forgot who he slapped, but somebody is beat up. Okay, got it. And yeah. uh, like my third story that I want to ask you is: um, Is there anyone who's going through a lot of emotional trauma just because of the world, but hides it like a lot, like major mental health issues, but like is hiding it? Yeah, I mean, see, um, I mean, she would talk about this herself, and I'm see, I'm really proud of this one person. I'm glad you asked me this. Um, I mean, I would take this opportunity to congratulate Nora. I think she's fucking fabulous, mm. and she went through one of the darkest times that anybody could go through in this industry. Uh, her, I think, the beginning uh, and the relationship that she was in was not good at all. Uh, she's spoken about it before. She's spoken on the show, but like, but I think the way she just like. changed it she went through a lot of it mm. in her career and in her personal life but i think she is like a woman of strength mm-hmm. and she motivates me majorly mm-hmm. i'm all for people who are not from this place and like yeah. has no backing no, no kind of support yeah. and come to this place and like make it on their own yeah. i mean that that's uh, one reason i really look up to you bro thank like, you yeah. thank you yeah, i mean on. yeah but like see i mean i i was going to say that i kind of did a bit of that but like see i'm not even close to what she has achieved but i mean she really motivates me like before coming here the reason why she's in my mind is because i watched an interview she gave and i messed her saying you have no idea how much you've grown and become mature and like you have like you know the things that you say now is because you've gone through those emotional trauma and mental trauma that you went through and like somewhere like she's also glad that she went through because that probably made her the person that she is today mm. but it's fantastic she's crazy yeah. extremely talented extremely hard working yeah. i mean 24 hours is like less for her to work you know yeah. so, so yeah. i mean bro uh, I, as much as i love this conversation yeah. we still need a third hardcore story <laughs> so i remember i shot this episode with richa chadda and malika dua richa and malika people that i know for a while before uh, in a in a very friendly way we've been in the same group party multiple times So this was like a not a no, no promotions associated, just a very candid chat, and um, like while I really love Kangana as an actor, I'm not a fan of the way she conducts herself in terms of uh, the comments that she makes and like the way she disses people in the industry and like just says nasty things about other contemporaries and all of that. I'm not, and especially her sister who is just just like like I don't know what she is. It's just like. 
if twitter is a dark place she is the black hole <laughs> that that rangoli chandel twitter needs to be banned okay the kind of shit that she says on that platform it's just crazy you can't say things like that about people so i want because richa and malika very openly um i mean vocal people i wanted to get an opinion on this because i felt like if you're a strong actor a strong woman in the industry doesn't mean you have to like step on other people in the industry you can be a great actor have opinions on a lot of things but that doesn't mean you have to stand on like other people in the industry to prove that i'm wrong mm-hmm. uh, strong or whatever mm. so i asked them i was like because you are open and all of that you are strong women in the industry too what do you think of her now malika said something very um, safe and she she was like but you know you can't ignore her past blah blah and richa said something very um, very chill she said like if i had a problem with somebody i wouldn't um um have a war of words on a public platform i'd rather do it one on one i think two weeks later is when we are airing this and of course there's pr around the episode there's people who watch the show now i think malika spoke about her father's her father was accused on me too and i we spoke about that and uh, so she got back to me saying over the two weeks she told me that renel if the pr puts it out there will be a big like a lynch mob situation again they'll troll me on twitter and i don't want it can you take it out from the pr release that you guys sent so i said absolutely so taking one piece of thing out was not a big thing hmm. but i did hmm. i do that all the time now richa never got back to me her manager was on set pr was on set there no problem now obviously she has spoken about kangana this was in the episode nobody saw this becoming a thing it blew up it blew up rangoli was tweeting against her she was doing i think she probably got scared because she was doing a movie with kangana called panga hmm. uh, and uh, miss uh, ranoth is very famous for cutting out people out of their movies in the edit because she is usually closely associated with uh, the editing of the movie and these wow. days she's directing also wow. so you never know so she i woke up to a this happened in the night because rangoli usually tweets sometimes tweets in the night and i was sleeping i woke up to a miss call from richa and i called her back and then she was like so i said i just woke up what's up and then she was like did you do you know what happened so i was like no and then she was like oh rangoli is tweeted blah, blah blah and then she said something on the lines of uh, you've used my friendship to do this mm. and i was like uh so i was very polite in the whole conversation it went on for about i think 20 25 minutes she spoke about how i'm i will use my friendship with others in the industry to get, to <laughs> get up. yeah to get controversial things on my show and to get headlines mm. and that's ruining them and i as polite as i could be i was all of that in that call uh, where i very politely told her that babe you have the um, equation with me where you could just message me and tell me to take this out your pr was on set who said nothing your manager was on set who said nothing your whole team was there they you never got back we saw this two weeks ago hmm. and then she said something on the lines she took amy's name because she knew we were best friends and she said i'm going to tell amy that you're going to use her friendship to uh your advantage and like make something controversial out of it and that like this was the first call i was doing in the morning i was in my bed you know <laughs> i almost teared up and then i called amy and i spoke whatever and then this woman started sending me links of like articles online so i called up and this went on like through the day this is like like she was like oh this is come this is come what do you mean what do you mean and i'm explaining everything to her and then in the end i called up a manager and i said listen this is too much your talent like is attacking me mm. so then her manager was saying no no she might be like doing it in the sh- spur of a moment she'll call you and apologize i said no i don't want any apology just let this go like i just want i want no communication with this person mm-hmm. so sh- because for me i was like because sometimes you know they want to say things mm. they want to be opinionated mm. uh opinionated whatever but then uh, sometimes when shit goes uh, loose yeah. then they get very nervous yeah. so ran tell me one thing bro does this success in the acting world in bollywood get to people's heads yeah so i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> like i i don't want to take this name because i mean that will become too controversial but i know of a of an actor who's become fairly big right now mm-hmm. who's doing some of the biggest movies mm. working with really good act, uh, mm. directors and actors and all of that um i remember meeting this person when um, and I, i he i He, when he was on the rise yeah and like he had like movies that never worked like two three of them and there's one movie which like blew up okay mm-hmm. not the best movie in terms of content like but it was like, slightly sexist or something uh so, sorry was the movie <laughs> slightly sexist <laughs> yeah okay very okay ha but, and 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 he had like a bunch of movies before that 
But yeah, yeah. One movie took off. Okay. Cool. Go on. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So yeah. So and then this person just changed, dude. Mm. And like I have, like I know of stories where, anyway, that's fine. Like very like. So I was actually going for. I mean, like stupid, silly, cheap things that mm. he's done at parties mm. and like very like. Uh, Uh, yeah very stupid things mm-hmm. and then like he was known for that you know mm. and suddenly like he has become like this arrogant thing like who who would like look through people at uh, places and like i mean it's i mean it's not about me i mean mm-hmm. i don't care i'm not but i know of like from actors that he's working with now and who who said like we have no idea what ha- what has happened to him and God. you know these are actors who who achieved a lot more than he has mm-hmm. and while i understand that the bollywood hero is the important thing in a movie but uh, they he's working with some of the actors who have been in the industry for a while now mm-hmm. you know and has done much better work than he has mm-hmm. but yeah it changes people but there are also people who are very cool yeah, yeah. i mean like i think koshal yeah i think vicky is f***ing fantastic yeah. i think i i would put my money on vicky koshal to become i want to say the next akshay kumar but yeah. i think he can be the first vicky koshal yeah yeah i think he's crazy and i also feel like see when i meet like a sharukh i feel like I mean see he does it he's Shahrukh Khan he doesn't have to make you feel comfortable he doesn't have to give you his time even if he's giving you like 35 minutes for your show he doesn't have to give you his best he can just sit there and not talk for 35 minutes and I would still be happy I'd be like Shahrukh sat here for 35 mm. I'm happy mm. but he humble grounded gives you his best every time would I have never seen him in a bad mood. Hmm. If in front of the camera or like you know if he walks into you he just make sure that I mean he doesn't have to come into my crew and ask them if they have had dinner. Hmm. I mean why would he care? Yeah, yeah. Right. So I feel like when you're completely secure yeah there is no like arrogance and yeah. like yeah. being bitchy or like this you know like this one attitude where like where you know that success has gone to your head. Yeah. It I think it's that middle space where you've just suddenly grown yeah. and you have no idea what to do with it 100%. that happens a lot yeah. and then there are people who are like some of these um, there is one uh, from a very entitled family in bollywood hmm. uh, which and a couple of them are doing fine but like one is there who is so entitled and he is he hits up like people on dm like hmm. including bloggers uh, models he's the son yeah he's the son okay. uh, <laughs> the models uh, b- like bloggers or whatever so the three kids may say he's the son and he's the one who's like uh, doing this i don't know uh, how many kids are there Achha, okay. but like he's the son Achha. there are multiple people okay. but you said the, co- the couple of others okay go on go on i'm sorry <laughs> yeah i mean couple of others as in like it's a form of saying no it's Achha. like a whatever way of saying okay. ranveer <laughs> uh, this podcast is not called uh, ending renel's career <laughs> okay <laughs> renel bro your career is already safe because you're one of the most intelligent chill people on social media yeah you keep saying this no. but like sometimes when i say these things i feel like i'm not <laughs> <laughs> no no you uh. you're, you're good yeah but this guy he is like uh, he hits up these people and he wants to sleep with all of them and actors also who are like in their nasal stages in the industry or whatever and he really feels like because he is from there they must sleep with him got it and i've heard this from multiple people and he feels like um, and he gets like upset if they don't sleep with him he'll be like how can they not sleep with me hmm are have you seen yourself mm-hmm. people would have standards no like money is not the only thing Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. Um, coming back to the positives of Bollywood, dude. Yeah. Shahrukh Khan, man. Yeah. You said how he's humble. You said yeah. how you know he carries himself with positivity everywhere. Yeah. On a personal level, dude, he's someone who inspires me a lot. Yeah. There's certain people who I study in my life. One of them is Virat Kohli. Another one's someone like Siddharth Roy Kapoor. Yeah. Karan Johar is someone I study. Yeah. Shahrukh Khan, someone I study. Yeah. And I try imbibing pieces of their personality. Dude, the way that guy carries himself into rooms. The yeah. The way he carries himself on screen. Yeah. Ah oh, man like I completely get what you're saying in terms of um he's he's magnetic yeah. and also you understand why life has allowed him to grow to that pedestal yeah. right now yeah. like yeah. if he flops in every other movie after this people yeah. will still remember him as the super hit hero yeah. that's what he's been able to achieve yeah. and you can't even say that about like people who've actually who are doing well continuously now for yeah. like 10 years yeah. you know but you'd say that about shahrukh khan when yeah. an entire generation looks back at like 2000 to 2015 they'll be like okay those are shahrukh's years and no yeah. one else's yeah. But what is what is like the most interesting thing for you when it comes to Shahrukh? When it comes to Shahrukh, yeah. So I've studied. Like we, you said that you imbibe like qualities from different people, right? Yeah. So what did you take from Shahrukh? 
uh okay I'll answer your first question first yeah. what's the most interesting thing yeah. is that he's been a low key struggler not too many people know about his yeah. struggles yeah. he's made it big late in life relatively late okay uh and in terms of um, what I take from him yeah. what I uh, is class hmm as in there is something called new money and something called old money in the world yeah new yeah. money is where you suddenly become rich overnight and you don't know what to do which is yeah. what you're saying about that young actor who's had one hit film and what happens to a lot of people old money is when your family's had money for two three generations yeah. and you're brought up in wealth you're brought up amongst wealthy people so you, you don't yeah. you don't show off you don't you know go out hunting for things you, you're very comfortable and secure yeah. in who you are shahrukh khan doesn't have old money yeah. he's he's new money but he's kept his head old money yeah. Yeah. That's what I take from. Yeah, him. yeah, that's and, true. And um, speaking of Bollywood, now this is not something I know for sure, but there is this whole controversy theory that uh, apparently success went to Govinda's head. Okay. And Govinda is also someone who the whole generation has looked up. My entire yeah. generation has looked up to yeah. Govinda. But can I tell you one thing right before we get into this? Yeah. Because you mentioned, I mean, we did talk about like I did talk about like a few people in the industry like who have done stupid things and fucked up things. But I'll tell you when you talk about. these people who i said like do these things or whatever for me they don't even make the industry for me hmm. like for me while there are like negative things it's also an industry of like sharuk right hmm. i mean these are people who make the industry for hmm. me i'm like there's dipika who's doing monumental work but like <laughs> who's changed the like the, the way this industry functions right hmm. she was the first one to be on a poster of a huge budget movie like hmm. padmavat hmm. so i mean this is what makes the industry yeah, for yeah. me like but then like these other like little chinu munu people like who are mm. making stupid decisions mm -hmm. i mean they give the industry a bad name yeah i yeah. mean the, i mean unfortunately we just like the the negative part of it gets highlighted a lot more yeah. but that doesn't i mean for me these are not even like big parts of the industry yeah. these yeah. are just like i don't know yeah. rodins need to be killed yeah, yeah for sure but coming coming back also it's fine <laughs> but coming back yeah, govinda to govinda what do you yeah. know about govinda like do you have any dope on govinda i heard this very uh, like interesting thing recently that apparently he said in some interview that he was offered avatar oh right yeah did you hear this yeah and james cameron uh, consulted with him about certain yeah. aspects of the movie and apparently he said no to the project because he didn't want to put color on his body <laughs> he didn't want body paint yeah this is just the stupidest thing that you can and i feel like if you are a, if you're a star of that capacity that like you're saying that you've looked up to him now he was not a part of my childhood because i grew up in kerala and like i mean the first time i was introduced to bollywood was like ddlj and kabhi khushi kabhi gham mm -hmm. that i watched in college and stuff like mm -hmm. that downloaded from torrents given <laughs> pen drives and all of that stuff but govinda was not like a part of my childhood but like i know the kind of craze that is and how varun looks up to govinda and he's i mean tries to imbibe qualities of him in his performance sometimes and all of that stuff and i get that but i think if you are at that stature i think you need to conduct yourself in a very respectful way mm. you can't do a movie like friday that mm. he did mm. oh my god i went for the screening of that movie it was just like i have no i i left in the interval mm. and i said like i had to go down to get something and i just left because this i mean you can't be like in that stature you can't be this like sleazy i mean you can be playing whatever character but in a movie like that where you're playing a sleazy character trying to hook up with like an underage looking girl i mean it's just a stupid decision yeah. to make yeah. and I, i wonder why people make these decisions you know you, you know man east to zone yeah. uh, go in the i don't i don't get what happened like yeah. for for growing up and seeing him you know do you really love govinda right I mean you were like don't troll him more. <laughs> no 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 man like nothing. <laughs> I I like uh, I completely get what you're saying. Yeah. Also I'm not very involved in the whole Bollywood. I'm not into movies and all yeah. at this yeah. stage of my life. Yeah. Growing up watched a lot of movies yeah. and uh, I just don't understand his career. I would love to you know have a conversation with him one day and ask him yo what's up like yeah. you know what's up in life. I want to ask him what happened. Yeah I want to ask him what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I know I know what you mean. Yeah. Okay but let's let's hey, but tell me something you Bolo. said you were not into Bollywood and like the movies that much but uh, do you like someone in Bollywood? do i like as in like do i look up to someone no like do you find someone cute i've, I've i mean i should ask you this question yeah. because i mean that's my vibe too i should ask you yeah, right go for it uh, i've said this on your show yeah. i have always found ananya pandey cute this is true yeah uh, i've i've told her this yeah thank yeah. you for that uh, <laughs> did you like tag her in something yeah i i'm i'm probably collaborating with her on something as Ooh. well yeah no no but there's so uh, she, again she's okay basically i'll, I'll give you is giving some dope guys he's collabing <laughs> with ananya i'm i'll give you some context uh, when you're from 
the same school which hmm. is me and ananya uh, yeah. our school has a certain culture and when okay. you meet another person from our school which is the dhruvamani international school yeah. you have a deep vibe with that person immediately yeah so yeah. Uh, i've always had this thing that we'll end up collaborating in saying that i do find her very cute and i find her very intelligent hmm. and i think she's one of those people who's using her fame for something good so yeah. really yeah. like on anya pandey really look up to her oh you spoke about her uh, bsr activity yes yeah i exactly. saw this correct yeah. so positive she's a cool girl yeah. i really like her yeah i met her i think so uh, one of my oh, hold on bro i've yeah. got to ask before speaking about anya because yeah. i know she's going to be the answer to my next question oh uh, name two guys and two girls in bollywood that you'd put your money on in the long term you'd be like okay these people have big potential i know anya pandey is one of them so yeah. let's kind of just put her out of the question and she's also someone i would pick okay. because i know mm. how i know her Like, yeah. I mean, I've been we love you, Ananya. Yeah. Okay. So, but other than Ananya, which two other girls would you put in that bracket? Which two other guys would you put in that? And bracket? you would want people who are already in the industry yeah. who've made their debuts. Okay. So, can I can I name one person who's just coming in November? Sure. So there's this girl called Alaya Furniture Wala, who uh, is Pooja Bedi's daughter. Hmm. Incredible talent. I'm like, wow. I mean, she's one of my closest friends. I mean, also, I'm in a really good space in my life right now because. a lot of my friends are becoming actors right like like they're getting launched now the year next year all of that stuff so i've seen the stuff alaya does and uh, she's incredible so mm. i would definitely and she's coming in a movie called jawani janeman with saif mm. it's a father daughter movie we're not pl- plugging this movie but like whatever <laughs> but i think she's fantastic big love to saif ali khan as well big love to saif ali khan mm. yeah you becoming a little parniti chopra in this episode oh, she i really love i don't get saif. that reference you really oh. love saif yeah. Saif, like, yeah saif is the guy so everyone used to call me chota saif in school and shit oh. because i have i have a bit of a saif look like a little hamtum type yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly and yeah. and that's also the guy i am like the saif ali khan character yeah. in dilchat and hamtum i'm that guy I'm you like, are that guy hey guys chalo <laughs> oh my god you know it's legit chill karte hain like whatever and and the cute love this is true viraj was telling me that you are like the person who and you told me this that you are the person who would throw parties and have yeah. fun and you yeah. now you become this yogi yes yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. exactly what it is yeah i really want to break it though um, like that's another my, conversation it's one of my missions uh, re- breaking my yoginess yeah oh, and make you party with like alcohol drugs and casual sex <laughs> cool cool i'll i'll sit there all I'll, these things that you think happens in parties i'll sit there i'll light up the party with my yoga listen i just want to tell you right before this viraj told me to spike your food with drugs <laughs> that's what he told me Well, so you know your manager has the best interest in right. Right, right now, you can spike my mind with uh, your four picks. Oh, he's like come back to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you psychology good. major. Yeah, so I'll give you like two, two, right? I think Vicky huh. definitely, and um, Ayushman. Okay, Vicky and Ayushman, I think are they've already been selected as oh, like know. the debuts. Yeah, people who you know are uh, like who's the next Ranveer Singh? Oh, they, I mean, from the debuts, there is no one. Mizan. Yeah, cool. Yeah, this I forgot. Sorry. Mizan Jaffer. Yeah, Mizan. Okay. Mizan. See now again, I'm I'm uh, so see I really love Miz. I, although I hated the movie, I thought it was a really bad movie to be made. I told I've told uh, Shamin is a closer friend, so told her that. But I thought like uh, Mizan is a good good yeah. actor. But do you, I, do you know that Mizan was also my junior and so was Sara Ali Khan. Oh wow! Yeah. So uh, Sara, I've not been in touch with at all. I didn't like know her well in school. Yeah. Mizan and me actually had like a few tips in school, like cute boy boyhood yeah. tips. And before this movie, I sent him like a best of luck message. So we, yeah. we even we have that DIY vibe. He's I a chill guy. He's yeah, a very cool guy. Beautiful yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, talented. And Always very confident. Very yeah. confident. Even from the time he was in school, he had a lot of personality. Yeah, I remember. I think Friday the movie released. Saturday, I met him at a party. And he said, uh, "So I said I'll go for the movie tomorrow day after." So he said, "Go watch it. I've killed it." <laughs> so I said, "Cool, cool. I'll nice. watch it. Calm down." Nice. So I mean, I didn't like the movie, but I thought he was ki- yeah. um, like quite good. Uh, but like again, I think from the debuts this year, yeah, I think it's very like uh, patchy. Yeah, thunder. Okay, okay, fine. I'm quite excited for a few debuts that are coming up. You Go know, on. from the other from the girls, I'm really excited about uh, Ananya for sure and Sara. Hmm. Oh, crazy! Yeah, yeah for sure, crazy. I yeah I think she's damn good. Um and like I want to ask you specifically about Ranveer Singh he came yeah. up. What has made you him... are a fan? Okay I'll give you a Ranveer Singh story. Uh-huh. We're family friends and this I got to know actually very recently. Oh really? Like as in like our parents knew each other and our grandparents knew each other. Okay okay, okay but okay, huh. the age difference between me and him was so much that I think we never chilled. We used to swim together at this place called the Otters Club when we were kids. Yeah yeah. yeah. And I remember this dude coming with like crazy hairstyles on mm. later on in life like Two years back, my mom told me, "Oh, you remember that dude? That was Ranveer Singh." Oh, okay, like, okay. Huh. So I'll I'll give you a cute story, and again, mm. this is a true story. So um, my family has a bad history with first names, and oh. 
yeah like my first name on my birth certificate was going to be ajitab like ajitab wala baat hai now now where this where gets i mean <laughs> this is where it gets interesting yeah. so my mom was a clearly cosmopolitan lady and she was like yo my kids not going to be called ajitab no I'm matter glad. what happens and she's like you know what uh, chotu's son his name's ranveer so why don't yeah. we name this kid after like chotu's son oh. and that ranveer turned out to be ranveer singh bhavnani and wow. this ranveer turned out to be be a biceps so baby that is damn yeah. cool yeah. so but you should like fall on your mother's feet every day <laughs> can you For imagine sure. being called ajitab yeah. and going through school and college yeah. and uh, i think a lot of the girls who have ended up dating have said that you know i kind of half dated you for your name so as in not because of ranvi singh ranvi is just a hot name ranvi it's a cool name yeah, ranvi yeah. means uh, what does it mean man i forgot brave on the battlefield wow Boom. whatever the battlefield means <laughs> oh yeah and mm. that's something i i kind of have put as a deep thought in my head yeah like just like ranveer when you're on the battlefield you're like be brave yes. but we do what yes. you wouldn't do usually in life <laughs> okay uh, ranveer singh why has his career taken off what has he done correct other than you know the obvious things that people know like oh he selected the right movies yeah has he has there been a right place right time thing for him is he a hard working guy see i mean of course um now with ranveer is from the from see again he's not a personal friend uh not there are mutual friends there of course but from what i've heard i mean he i don't think admits this or like whatever from the stories that i've heard there there was like an involvement of money in like launching himself and all of that stuff and now this is like a weird i think nepotistic situation where like you've sort of uh, be, are like involved in the industry through money as a factor and then sort of yeah but uh, dude that's like that's like a thousand other people who launched like yeah yeah, yeah correct correct so what's so, what's made him the new shark yeah so of course like uh there is like money playing a part in like launching yourself but in in these cases i have no problem when there's so much talent right mm. but i just feel like it's this crazy energy and like no inhibition and like a very like metrosexual comfortable like much is more right Com- like yeah. yeah he's like a man like a guy's guy mm. but he's also very like modern and contemporary and like 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 what do you call it it's, it's he's not like approachable he he is yeah. approachable and like he's just like he is a boy's boy hmm. but he's also like this the sweetheart right yeah, yeah, yeah. he's also the i mean he he's not like he's not salman khan who you would be scared of hmm. he's like he's like a guy who guys can look up to and like like but he's a also be a, yeah yeah, yeah. also on. very approachable yeah, yeah. and he does all of these crazy things and like it's hard to ignore hmm like it's just like, i mean i mean and, i'm yeah. yashraj is very good with strategies yeah. and like you are just putting this out and like i mean if you're dancing on linking road <laughs> then like where will i ignore you yeah 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 got it are the two powerhouses of bollywood currently like dharma productions and yashraj in terms of i obviously they're the powerhouses in terms of film production yeah. but do they control the pawns on the chessboard as no well? okay. no it's not like that no not at all i think it's it i mean see now when you say yashraj and dharma productions you're talking about uh, uh two big organizations right i think it's people hmm. i think it's it's select few people in these karan uh, johar and aditya chopra yeah and which is um, which is very cool i hmm. i have no problem with that hmm. because i think uh, in so many years that they have been in the industry they have earned the right to and they have that power and kudos to them yeah. yeah i mean this is like i'd never be this is not i mean not that i want to do any of these things but like it's insane yeah bro i mean for for someone to have that kind of power for like you know if like i'm sure if karan picks up his call picks up a call on somebody and says i want you to do this i'm sure people will do it mm-hmm. and i'm sure that that's the same case with like aditya chopra yeah. who yashraj yeah. and of course it's true that uh, they have some of the biggest talent in the country mm-hmm. i mean uh, and they're very smart businessmen as well yeah okay. yeah uh, the, uh, dharma manages uh, i mean unless you put out a kalank but uh, <laughs> but uh, dharma has like a uh, dharma has varun and alia and vicky i mean that's a great decision right a mm-hmm. uh, dharma which only had like uh, the commercially viable like the masi stars now also acquired vicky as mm. their talent mm. it's vicky is in house dharma talent now mm-hmm. who's managed by matrix who usually manages dharma's talents mm. so there's vicky there's other there's um, akshay there is uh, varun alia there is um, um i think tara tara i think is dharma uh, so stuff like that yeah. and yashraj is anushka uh, parniti ayushman arjun all of these people got it got it so but like smackdown versus raw 
Do you get that's a WWE? No, reference. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I'm not. Okay, but, but go on. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean so there are big important people in both these places, but I don't think I don't think it's two big agencies or organizations just controlling everything, mm-hmm. you know. I think it's people. Yeah. But there are also again there are also other things yeah, like course. Dinesh Vijayan mm. who's um, who has a uh, Madoc mm-hmm. is making some really cool movies. That's also like but I mean it's probably sort as big as Dharma mm-hmm. because Dharma comes with that yeah. kind of lineage and Yashraj comes with Yash Chopra and that lineage and all of that stuff. It's like Lannister and Starks and then there's like yeah, a bunch of Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, GOT reference I get. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but okay. Cool. So that was Bollywood. I also want to ask you because you're kind of on the digital side as well. You interview yeah. digital people. You interview TikTok stars. You interview. Yeah. You know. You you. I've you've been know. rolled heavily for this, this <laughs> TikTok decision I have made. No, but but you you basically know the digital space as well. Yeah. Uh, we're bros. So yeah. like, I want to know how are digital people different from Bollywood people. Like say a Bionic beer biceps mm. when you first interviewed us when you first chilled with us yeah. what how is the and same with Prajakta Bhuvan yeah how is the vibe different from like chilling with like a Bollywood person and you're a psychology major so yeah, break it down to like the team pressure huh? <laughs> see I mean see I'm not a very like uh, I do each to his own like each person has their own vibe yeah I mean see I mean I can draw dif- differences if I spin down to it but I'll tell you like for me. I'm not an advocate of like you know when people say like because they are from Bollywood they will act a certain way and like because stardom and all of that there are people who do that there are people who don't you know I'm sure in like digital space also there might be people who come with like an airy vibe to mm. them and like you know be like oh we are like the thing or whatever I mean but thankfully I have met four of you guys that I've interacted with be it be Bhuvan or Prajakta and you and Nick I have just had like the best time mm. we've had fun and I really like the fact that. I mean now I don't know if once like this is big boom and like uh like if you will change and like the the way like the entourage and all of that but like of course with bollywood like it's a thing to walk around with 15 people mm-hmm. right there is no need for that there are people who walk around with bodyguards who no one is clicking a picture with mm-hmm. like n- there is no need but mm-hmm. like it's a, it's become a thing you need one manager you need one pr <laughs> you need your makeup style their assistant um, your uh, no, for assistant. I'll, I'll tell you the difference between digital and bollywood in bollywood i think people chase entourages in digital even if you don't have an entourage yeah. the entourage just gets created yeah Yeah. That's that's yeah. one difference. Yeah. But it's cool. But like I like the vibe of digital because I feel like it's a growing space and uh, it might change. Yeah. Like yeah. once it becomes like a I still feel like we are on the growing nice. like the graph but like once it like hits that level yeah. now I don't know if it'll change yeah. things yeah. or whatever. But I really like the vibe now yeah. because I feel like it's a very approachable, very chilled out, mm. very fun, real. Yeah. Got yeah. It. Um Now my next question to you is kind of not related to Bollywood, but it's just this conversation we've had once. Yeah. It's about two people I look up to for their professional prowess: K. L. Rahul and Hardik Pandya. Yeah. After the whole Karan Johar controversy, like I mean, of course, Sorry. what they said wasn't appropriate, but in saying that, uh, can you like elaborate a little bit? How are these brothers in like real life? Because in terms of a cricket fan, like from the perspective of a cricket fan, K. L. Rahul is in some books considered the next Rahul Dravid. Yeah. Hardik Pandya is Kapil Dev's successor. These guys are have huge potential in the world yeah. of cricket yeah. and every single Indian cricket fan backs KL Rahul Hardik Pandya on the pitch like we yeah. want them to do well we want to see them becoming in legends of Indian cricket yeah. what are these brothers like in real life because they're close friends of yours yeah yeah so KL and I met even i mean the first time we met that only was one controversy because uh, i met so me KL Nidhi and Nidhi Agarwal who Nidhi was Agarwal, yeah who is one of my closest friends because she went to college with me she was my senior there she wouldn't admit it and she's also gorgeous she is beautiful mm. Nidhi. <laughs> yeah, Nidhi single, by the way. Oh, yeah, but she doesn't do her yoga, man. So it's not my vibe. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't no. talk shit about my best friend. But anyway, that's fine, huh? She works out. Cool. I okay, whatever. That's one fourth of the game. One. Go on. What a bitch this person is. <laughs> I thought I was bitchy. He's sassier than I am. Well done. Just being my digital self. Okay, cool. <laughs> so Nidhi, me, Krishna, uh, Krishna was in there. There was Rahul, KL, and then a couple of other friends. So we all went to this place in Bandra for coffee. That's when I met him for the first time. And then he, when we went out, now obviously cricket Bollywood though is like in this country is like the biggest two poles. Hmm. And they got everyone got papped. And then the next day they were like, okay, now this is a relationship because I think after Virat and Anushka they couldn't find anybody, so they were like this next. Hmm. <laughs> But there was nothing. There was yeah. no conversation. There was no like nothing that was going no on vibe. in between them. Friends from Bangalore yeah. met. But like Hardik again, I met through uh, uh, Rahul at one of the parties. and 
but they are very chill people in in real life and i see i mean the only place that i disagree with you a little bit because you said it was slightly inappropriate for them to say that but i don't think it was inappropriate at all i'll tell you why because see because i've had personal conversations with hardik i feel like like he talks like this right and i think his brothers we all talk like that like there are things that we would see now my the only problem for me is you should be a little careful about where you're seeing this mm-hmm. i don't think it was inappropriate yeah. you just talked yeah. about like how many girls that you've slept with or whatever like or that you go to a party or that you slept with this one this one this one i mean that i mean you're not saying that only guys can say this na a girl also on that show like many girls talk about all of these things so that doesn't make it sexist that doesn't make that doesn't mean that they're demeaning those women they're not saying anything bad about those women they're saying that they he slept with these people or like you know whatever there are times when you're having casual sex or whatever which is very cool i mean how can you like you know such a big deal you can't like make suddenly like you can't make oh they're degrading women or like i mean of course you have to be very careful about what you say in a public platform which is a very big talk show because then obviously people have that space to digest uh, i mean dissect it and people in this country have uh, in the world have a lot of time and especially with cricket being the gentleman's game and all of that you have to be extra careful so that's the only thing but i really thought they were really cool and cool and that so poor rahul he said no word in it but still got into trouble <laughs> but like but yeah i think i thought it was really chill yeah he i mean he talks like this and i'm glad that he was his real self but like just yeah just well, like to give you the Twitter. yeah to give you the cricket fans perspective yeah. because i think we're coming from yeah. two different sides yeah, yeah, yeah. uh to give you the cricket fans perspective bro uh and this is also something i feel as a fitness and lifestyle influencer hmm. your thoughts actions words you say have a huge impact on young kids right okay so that's where the cricket fan came in and got offended because in our country cricketers are gods so anything a cricketer says it becomes a part of a kid's mindset so they might have said it in a casual fun way masti mein okay like as we say uh, yeah. and i understand their perspective as bros but uh, what they kind of look past is that do this like 11 12 year old kid who's just coming to terms with his own sexuality and he's sitting in some corner of the country in like a village hmm. is probably listening to that guy's words and saying okay so if these guys are chill about uh, you know talking about sex and women so casually even i'll become that casual and then it becomes a case of chinese whispers of thoughts but i'll tell you something ranveer yeah now see the thing is um we be in the entertainment industry where like people are actors or directors or like writers whatever uh, and in cricket or sports whatever now when i if i'm signing a movie contract or if i'm signing the indian cricket team contract what do i sign i sign that i will put in all my hard work for to to win yeah. right to win in the sport mm. am i signing a contract to be the role model for the yeah. country i'm not yeah. right i mean i am in the indian cricket team because i can play cricket yeah, yeah. am i like i mean are we put yeah. Bro, trying and putting yeah, our, 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 yeah this thing is also curse of being at that pedestal right? yeah yeah because see i think and i think that people need to understand yeah. Pro, see now it's about censoring content to maybe people who wouldn't understand it and wouldn't mm. uh, in take it properly yeah, yeah. maybe a 9 year old child might not get it yeah. then maybe restrict the content yeah. like that yeah. because i feel like you can't make somebody a Perfecting. 100% perfect okay you can't be i mean we all have flaws yeah, you know yeah, for sure we all talk a certain way mm-hmm. but like because i am in this industry because i'm a cricketer or i'm an actor yeah i have to be perfect mm-hmm. i can't sure. be so my personal pressure yeah it's my i mean it's my personal life and I'm, i'm talking about it mm-hmm. and suddenly like oh you can't talk about it because you're not being a role model but where where did i sign, where did i sign up for this in in saying all this the outcome has been that uh, as a cricket fan again you've, yeah. you've seen kl and hardik were you affected by it personally no yeah because like i'm i think i have my own mind exactly. uh, yeah. what's it called my my own mentality how to process information uh, that's coming yeah. to you right I mean, yeah that's that's his opinion on things i have my own opinion on things It may not be the case for a 16 year old young cricketer who's like big trying to become an all rounder because yeah. hardik pandya is an all rounder yeah. and then yeah. trying to do everything hardik does hmm in saying that that's why we see virat and dhoni as like the nation's biggest fans because they're good boys as well um and in terms of being a cricket fan both kl and hardik have really stepped up yeah after that they both gotten really serious about yeah. the games yeah you see even more determination yeah. in hardik's eyes when he's bowling he's become a way better bowler yeah i'm so happy with the turns their careers have taken yeah. god bless those brothers uh, yeah. everyone makes mistakes so i remember i sent her when this whole thing went down and they were being penalized for what they did and yeah. all that kl is a very close friend yeah. and i know him better than hardik yeah so i remember i sent him a message saying i know this is a step back but after this if you come back like a lion 
there'll be nothing better what was their mentality when this was going on i mean obviously they took in the stride of the things and all of that they were i mean of course it's not a it's they were not playing a few matches and all of that stuff right they're not something yeah. like that happened they right? got suspended for a while correct but they warriors in their hearts yeah so i said i mean you know like when you get it's also a cool thing right like you get sort of like pulled down a little bit and then when you come back like a lion then that's just like crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. so i said this is what you should be yeah. doing so i sent him a sweet message he was like thank you you know yeah. so i think yeah i think they did that and i think now they're doing really well i yeah, think yeah they are and you know if it continues this way i wouldn't be surprised if they become the next captain vice captain after the mm. current generations of like kohli rohit sharma shikhar dhawan are yeah. done i think these two are the leaders of the team can i get some gap from you go on because you are like you are see i am very like i'm a little disassociated with cricket go but like i just watch it sometimes for rahul and what happened between uh, virat and uh, what is that rohit sharma rohit sharma uh, i follow cricket very intensely yeah. and i feel it was a lot of media hype rohit yeah. sharma and virat for true cricket fans if you see them on the pitch they might have been some you know small tiff okay. which happens amongst any professionals like me and yeah. my co-founder viraj who i love more than my own family we yeah. have tiffs Okay, but so it was that. Yeah. When you're playing sport at that kind of a level, yeah. Your teammates are your family. You see that when you watch cricket as a as a cricket fan, you're right. seeing an entire fifty over match, you're seeing an entire test match. You see how Rohit and Virat talk to each other. You see right. how they play along with each other. They've had arguments on the pitch as well. Hmm. Like Rohit has gotten Virat run out many times, but you hmm. see the love between them like brothers. Hmm. So hmm. it was a lot of media hype. Even if you read the media articles. you realize that it's written from a very a hey, fight ho gaya ye ko fight ho gaya fight ho gaya it's that way yeah every yeah. single article was written like that and the but he unfollowed them on instagram and stuff like that it might have it might be a small tip it's blown up way out of proportion the next day there was this uh, dressing room video that came out of ravinder jadeja who's another cricketer okay. and rohit sharma playing a game uh. about oh guess the cricketer so uh, jadeja imitates kohli And Rohit Sharma says, "Oh, this is my boy Virat," and then Virat laughs in the corner, and this was released as next day. Oh, yeah, so dude, they're fine. Yeah, they're all right. It's a lot of media hype, dude. Okay, that's the okay. curse of being an actor or a cricketer. That little, yeah. you know, nuggets of negativity in your life are amplified and correct, thrown correct. out in the public. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the power of social media that you've got your boy beer biceps backing you, and you've got the voice of like the youth backing yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyway, man, that was like the interview today. Hey. <laughs> this is fab yeah, i had so, a great conversation yeah bro one last like super quick question i have and this is a more personal question hmm. dude you have like a crazy network in like bollywood and like cricket and you know you you've reached out to like the biggest of the biggest people hmm. now i want to ask you because you're a really smart guy your street smarts are like crazy okay okay ha huh. how much have you used your psychology major degree to get ahead in life like how much have you used your communication skills See, I think it's more communication skills than uh, reading people or whatever. Not really. I'll be very honest. I mean, see, I did three years of psychology in Christ at Bangalore. Yeah. And uh, for my parents, I was like the happiest thing because they were like, you know, some kind of doctor he will become. Hmm. The Malu parents, they want that's what they wanted. But I think I was always good with people. Hmm. You know, and and you know, sometimes sometimes people ask me. is it just like so difficult because you have to be at a party you it's like you're always working you know mm-hmm. yeah, and you have to talk to everybody and for me that's not the case i'm like this anyway mm-hmm. i'm always talking to people i have no inhibition in going up to a person and starting a conversation i'm never like i will wait for this person to come talk to me no why mm-hmm. i'm i would i'm ve- i'm a people's person i've always been a people's person mm-hmm. i talk to everybody unless i don't want to mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. if i don't want to like if i don't like yeah, that's yeah. a different thing yeah. But like I'm very chill with people. Yeah. So you think being a people's person pays off the most in your career? Yeah. Okay. In my career, at least. Yeah. No, in Be- any career, bro. Especially the yeah. media industry. But okay. Huh. I've worked in like hardcore engineering industries, and even there, it's all about. Yeah, of course, because teamwork and like you know, yeah, like working in a group, working with people, all of that's always very important. Yeah. For me, it was very important that. I mean I never studied journalism I never wanted to be a journalist I'm not qualified to be one I didn't want to be called one because I think sometimes it comes with a bit of a negative connotation because then you sound like this person who's always looking for a story hmm. not my vibe I host a talk show which is a very friendly vibe uh, sort whatever you yeah. call it uh, Uh, poor version of coffee with current no. but you say that i mean not it's you it's got its own vibe like for people who actually go into the details of it like, yeah for people who watch the show they yeah. know what like yeah but i get that a lot on youtube on yeah. the comment but that's fine yeah, that's fine yeah. you talk you're talking to similar uh, sounding dudes mm-hmm. hosting a talk show i'm sure uh, this is the only comparison people can draw mm-hmm. but that's fine mm-hmm. but um, 
uh but like for me i wanted that friendly vibe and so because thankfully i'm a people's person and i'm i'm good with communication and the language i'm okay with so i've always i've always been very good with people and people and like most of the friends that i made in the industry in the first place i made them through the show like a lot of the actors who came on the show and they were like oh you're a chill guy like whatever <laughs> let's hang you know it was always that yeah. we yeah, got along yeah, like that we exactly. met for the first time on the yeah, show yeah, yeah. and like today we're doing this because we got along yeah, yeah. and i think i it's always been that but like now I, a lot of other friends that i made like that now they're becoming actors so mm. that's a very good space for me because now like i've seen all of it you know i've seen them uh, struggle i've seen them like get their first movie i've dropped them to the airport when they're leaving so now that that's special yeah. but like yeah you're i one, think it's a, you're one of the most low key influential guys in the space i'm i want to believe that i have a lot of influence but like i don't know man like it's i think yeah maybe a little bit <laughs> <laughs> oh i like that Yeah, yeah like man. maybe I'm I'm good with people like you know I feel like I can give good good advices yeah, and, and, like, and you know, know you come from a genuine place also like right? yeah, that's, that's yeah. I mean that's your thank friend you. thank you thank you Uh, thank you for this beautiful episode, bro. Thank you. Yeah. I had fun. Did we're you gonna, get gap? Yes, but okay. we're also going to be doing a lot more because there's a lot more treasure in your head that's yeah. not exposed to the world. That's so, true. Yeah, bro. You hey. find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be linking all of Reynolds' handles down below. Make sure you follow him. We'll be linking the episode we did over yeah. on Reynolds' yeah. show yeah. and with Reynolds. be you, Nick. Uh, yeah, with with my boy Nick and my other boy Reynolds. Yeah. Anyway, so guys, see you. Hope you had fun.